All I want for Christmas is my two front teeth. My two front teeth. My two front teeth. All I want for Christmas is my two front teeth. And I can have a Merry Christmas. Didn't see you there. Sorry. Uh, today is day 12 of our Advent, and Kayla and I are going to read it with you. Our cover's coming off, so let's fix that really quick. All right. So we're going to start off with Luke 2, 1 through 3. And it says, In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole empire should be registered. So everyone went to be registered, each to his own town. When a group is traveling together, it is common for a head count to be done. So like when you go on a road trip and mom does roll call and you make sure that Kayla's in the car, make sure I'm in the car, that Darren's in the car, everyone's in the car. This means a person will count the number of people in the group to make sure everyone is present. If the number is off, a search would begin to find the missing people. Caesar Augustus decided to do a head count but in this case, it was a huge task. He wanted all people to be counted. But first, they had to travel back, travel back to the city where they were born. So I would have to go back to Oregon. Kayla would have to go back to Missoula. You'd all have to go back to where you were born. The Bible explains that Jesus was born in Bethlehem, yes, because his parents were there for the census. Although Joseph and Mary lived in Nazareth, Joseph was born in Bethlehem. The soon-to-be parents were traveling because they were following the laws of the government. This information is part of a bigger picture of God's plan for Jesus to be born in Bethlehem. God took care of all the little details, even when it looked like someone else was in charge of where Joseph had to go. So let's pray really quick. Dear God, you always have a plan, even when I don't see it or understand it. Help me remember you sent Jesus because of your love for me, and I can always talk to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, on the page that says, taking it further, why was there a census? Actually, the government still takes a census today. In Bible times, the census was used for the purpose of taxing the people or finding soldiers for war. Today, a census is used to make sure that people have fair representation in government, as well as for gathering other information that is helpful for building roads and schools and to protect and care for people. So if you took account of the people in planes, there's maybe like 1,500 Maybe. It's, it's pretty small compared to everywhere else. So you wouldn't think that we would need a lot. But if you counted something like Missoula, they have a lot more people. So they're going to need more stuff. And that's what a census does and what it helps. So now we're going to look up some of these verses to see how a census was used in the Bible. So you're going to look up Exodus 30, 12, Numbers 1, 2 through 40, or 2 and 49, not 2 through 49. Oh my goodness. Numbers 26. 2 and 4, and Acts 5, 37. Now we have a recipe for love. How many of you like doing recipes? I like doing recipes. Oh, yeah. What's your favorite recipe? Cookies. Cookies. What kind of cookies? Chocolate chip. Chocolate chip cookies. We all know the recipe. There's butter, there's sugar, there's eggs and flour, eggs, flour, chocolate chip, baking soda, all the stuff, all the stuff for the recipe. One thing many people remember while preparing for Christmas and the celebration of Jesus' birth is the smell of food. Everybody think of your favorite food. Mm. Favorite Christmas food. Now take a deep breath like you're smelling it. <sighs> now I'm hungry. Now I'm hungry. So let's finish this up. Use the recipe below to create a snack for your family to prepare and enjoy together. You may choose to make a double batch and share the love of Jesus with others too. So this says create a custom Christmas snack mix. And you can use some or all of the following ingredients to make up a snack mix for your whole family. And you guys can read that as marshmallows and pretzels and a bunch of candy and it's really good. And then you can just decorate cookies. You can buy them or bake them, just plain sugar cookies. 
and then you allow them to cool and you decorate them. You can give them to people and show the love of Christ through that, or you can eat them in your living room while you watch movies, which is what I like to do. And then you're just going to write whatever your family decides to do, spending time talking about the love of Jesus, review some of the verses from the devotions this week, and discuss what you may have learned or were reminded of about Jesus' birth. Look for ways to talk and share the love of Jesus with others as well. That concludes our week for love. We hope you guys enjoyed reading these with us. We enjoyed reading them for you. And next week, we are going to focus on joy. Peace. Peace. Joy. 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 <laughs> joy. We're going to focus on joy. See you guys later.